Hey guys, it's Mr. C here and it's time for wits. So I've got my wits badge on. I've got my wits wristband on. See if you guys can find yours that I gave you. And today's book is called Eagle Boy. Why do you think the story might be called Eagle Boy? What do you guys know about eagles? Have you ever fed a wild animal? Why do you think we shouldn't feed wild animals? Those are some pre-reading questions to answer. You can always pause the video and go back, listen to those questions again, pause the video to talk about those questions. But let's get into the story now for wits. Eagle Boy. Remember, a wits book stands for walk away, ignore, talk it out, and seek help. Eagle Boy. Along the rugged shoreline of the Pacific Northwest, a village stood on the cliffs overlooking the ocean. Eagles with snow white heads and sleek, dark bodies swooped over the village with razor sharp talons and snatched silver fish from the water. The people of the village did not like the eagles. Eagles steal our fish, they cried. Fly away, fly away. Yet one boy, an orphan, loved watching the eagles dip and soar above the ocean waves. And whenever the boy returned from fishing, he always gave a share of his salmon to the eagles. Eat, he would yell, tossing fish into the air for the eagles to catch. You should not feed the eagles, scolded the people. But the eagles are my friends, he replied. The people called him Eagle Boy. Eagle Boy was a good fisherman. In summer months, when fish were plentiful, he offered his largest and finest fish to the chief's eldest daughter, Quish Quish E. I do not need your fish, she said, mocking him. One year, as autumn faded into winter, fish became scarce, and the whole village began to run short of food. We must move our village, announced the chief. We must find more food. The people packed all they owned into their canoes. Eagle Boy stood on the beach and watched as one by one the canoes pushed off. Eagle Boy was poor and did not own a boat. We have no more room, said the chief, stepping into the last canoe. Let your friends, the eagles, feed you, laughed Quish Quish E. But just before they paddled away, the chief's youngest daughter, Chu Kudobi, slipped Eagle Boy a piece of dried fish so he would not get hungry. As the canoes disappeared over the waves, Eagle Boy stood alone on the wind-swept beach. He ate his small piece of dried fish and fell asleep to the sound of waves crashing against the shore. That night he dreamed of eagles, eagles soaring in the sunshine, eagles swooping over large piles of fish. He even dreamed that he too could fly. As the morning sun stretched its golden fingers across the beach, Eagle Boy awoke to the screeching of an eagle as it dropped a fat fish beside his fire. Thank you, my friend, he shouted as the eagle flew away. Hungrily, Eagle Boy roasted and ate the fish. The next morning, two eagles dropped fish by his fire. Thank you, shouted Eagle Boy again. I will live another day. At the next sunrise, Eagle Boy watched as three eagles dropped silver fish on the sand. He ate his fill and spread the rest out to dry. When evening approached, Eagle Boy gathered all the wood he could find and built an enormous bonfire on the beach. Dancing around and around the flames, he sang songs to honor the eagles. 
The next morning, the sky was full of eagles circling over a huge, dark object close to shore. They were bringing him a whale. Eagle Boy slipped a long rope made of cedar bark around the whale and tied it to a rock. The whale could provide enough food for a whole village. The largest eagle landed beside Eagle Boy. Eagle Boy tied strips of dried fish around the eagle's neck. Take this to Chukudubi, he said. I want to repay her kindness. Gliding on the wind, the great eagle found the tribe huddled around a campfire on a distant beach. Hunting and fishing had not been good. The shadow of hunger showed on the people's faces. The eagle landed beside Chukudubi as she dug hopefully for clams on the beach. She realized at once who had sent the food. Taking the dried fish from the eagle, she gobbled a few bites and then raced to her father. Look, she cried, a gift from Eagle Boy. Quish Quish E eyed the fish with greed. The boy you left behind is rich with food, she said to the chief, while we have nothing. Take us back, father. I will marry the boy and we will eat his food. The chief shook his head in shame. We were wrong to leave the boy. The people around the campfire agreed. We thought only of ourselves, said one man. The boy will not accept us back, said another. Even if he did, said an old woman, we could never make the journey home without food. Perched on a branch high above them, the great eagle listened to the people. Spreading its giant wings, it returned across the water. That night, Eagle Boy stood before the great eagle. The eagle's intense eyes were dark pools of wisdom. Deep in those eyes, the boy could see a distant beach where his people sat weak with hunger. Eagle Boy turned toward the flames. Let them go hungry, he shouted in anger, just as they left me to do. In silence, the great eagle watched the boy. Staring into the fire, Eagle Boy remembered the canoes paddling away. He remembered Quish Quish E laughing at him. But he also remembered Chukodubi slipping him food and the eagles bringing him fish and saving his life. At dawn, the boy again stood before the great eagle. How can I help my people? He asked. The eagle spread its wings and lifted into the air. As it rose, one shiny black feather fell, floating down toward Eagle Boy. The boy reached out and caught the feather. As he did, a wave of power flowed through him, and in that moment, the boy took the form of an eagle. On the distant beach, the tribe sat weak with hunger. Suddenly, the sky was filled with screeching eagles. Eagles swooped. Eagles soared. Eagles flew over the people, dropping hundreds of silvery fish. It is a sign from Eagle Boy, cried Chukudubi, smiling. Yes, agreed the chief. He has forgiven us, and now we can go home. With renewed strength, the people packed their canoes, and they set out across the water. Eagle Boy stood alone on the beach, watching the canoes approach. A single black eagle feather hung from his hair. The chief was the first to come ashore with Quish Quish E beside him, dressed in her finest cedar bark clothing. You have saved our people, said the chief. I offer my eldest daughter Quish Quish E in marriage. Eagle Boy shook his head. I cannot accept. My heart belongs to Chukudubi. The people honored Eagle Boy and Chukudubi with a wedding celebration 
and a great feast. From that day on, the people of the Pacific Northwest Coast and the Eagles lived and hunted in harmony. In time, Eagle Boy grew to be a great chief, and the Eagle became the symbol of his people. Well, that was a great book, Eagle Boy. And I have a few post-reading questions to ask you. Before we get into that, you're probably wondering what's around me. This is what's called a beaded blanket. And it's got an image of a whale on the back. Now, it's not a real beaded blanket. This is just made out of felt and some buttons. Sometimes they were called button blankets as well. And this one was made in my classroom years ago. So it's just a, a reproduction, a pretend one but still nice to have. All right, let's find out if you know the answer to some questions about Eagle Boy now that we've finished the story. So first question I have is, why was the young man in this story called Eagle Boy? Why was Eagle Boy criticized for feeding the eagles? Criticized means why was he sort of made fun of and mocked at? Why did they not like that? Why was Eagle Boy left behind by his people? How did Eagle Boy honor the eagles that fed him? What did Eagle Boy need to ignore in order to forgive and help his people. Who of the people understood that they had been forgiven and that they could return back to their village? And why was Chu Kudubi a better partner for Eagle Boy? Than the older dog. Here's some answers to those questions. Why was the young man called Eagle Boy? Well, the villagers called the young man Eagle Boy because he liked to feed the eagles with fish that he had caught. And why was Eagle Boy criticized for feeding eagles? The villagers did not view the eagles as their friends. They saw the eagles as taking their food. Why was Eagle Boy left behind by his people? There was no room in the boat. How did Eagle Boy honor the eagles who fed him? He built a large fire and he danced around it. Why did Eagle Boy need to ignore and forgive in order to help his people? And he had to ignore his hurt feelings for having been left behind. And he had to forgive the villagers in order to save them from starvation. Who understood the sign that the tribe had been forgiven and could return back to the village? Well, that was Chukudubi. She understood that when the eagles returned with food, that they had been forgiven. And why was Chukudubi a better partner than Kwishkwishi? For Eagle Boy? Well, they respected one another and they valued their friendship with the eagles. So there's the questions and the answers and you can always pause the video and go back and come up with your own answers. In the meantime, keep your wits, walk away, ignore, talk it out, and I'll have some more First Nations stories for you later. Bye.